Uh, Laurie, first of all, the markets have opened. How are they reacting? There's not much of a reaction at all. In fact, sterling was down a little bit. Ye yesterday, when this all kicked off, sterling was down a little bit, but it's down 12 percent already this year against the dollar. So all of that movement, all of that anticipation yeah. of Boris Johnson going, that's already you priced know, into the markets. I thought markets didn't like indecision. Th they don't. They absolutely, you're absolutely right. Markets hate uncertainty. But Boris Johnson's position here has been, uns at least in the eyes of investors, has been uncertain for months. So I think the markets are looking at this as the beginning of the end, that this will yeah, be fact. resolved so at some point. Even though he doesn't point. see this as the end, the markets have already banked on him going. A a absolutely. And, and a lot of the movement with Sterling came earlier this year, again, down 12 percent. That's a massive rise, or a ma massive rise in the dollar, a massive fall in Sterling. That's the sort of thing you see for emerging market currencies. You don't tend to see that big of movement in a big major currency. In fact, yesterday, the FTSE 100 was up more than 1%. That's a big move, up more than 1%. So the markets are pretty unperturbed about this. Um, what's the reaction to the new chancellor? We don't know really. I suppose the point is, how long will he be um, the new chancellor? Uh, Nadim Zahawi there, and um, he, he um, is planning to reverse Rishi Sunak's corporation tax rises for big businesses, which were supposed to come in at what, something like 20... I wanted to bring it from 19% to 25%. Yeah. Yeah. It's a risky move because it will be seen to be benefiting corporations rather than pe yes. people who are struggling with or this cost of living for the crisis. pandemic. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and Zahai has to be very careful that he doesn't fall into the Rishi Sunak trap, which is a very rich member of parliament, yes. a very wealthy member yes. of parliament, seeming to be out of touch with people who are really suffering from the cost of living crisis. So he's going to have to tread a very careful line there. Uh, extremely careful. What do you think his main priority will have to be? And do you think he's actually got the political willpower behind him to actually engineer any change right now? It's such a good question. And how beholden is he to the prime minister? You know, he was appointed yesterday. You would think that that was, it would sort of rob him of a degree of independence. Yet he was one of the MPs that went to see Boris Johnson yesterday to plead with him to go. So whether he's independent or not is an a open question. He did the, the broadcast rounds yesterday and wasn't particularly, to my mind, particularly impressive. He was talking about evidence-based policymaking. That doesn't mean anything to me. There was no sense of um, that he understood that people are suffering, that inflation is very, very high, no sense of how he might tackle those things. And it's not just cost of living. We've got labor unrest here, he, uh, a yeah. difficult trading relationship with our biggest trading partners. So he's got a lot on his plate. I don't know who would want the job. Well, uh, Isabel is having a morning um, uh, line in. She's a morning off today. Um, um, Isabel, who's half this award goes to, I do have to say. But she just sent me um, an article written by Boris Johnson uh, some 12 years ago. And this is about Gordon Brown. And it's actually the irony is, uh, is shouldn't be missed on any of us. And um, he talks about Gordon Brown. He says, the whole thing's unbelievable. As I write these words, Gordon Brown is still holed up in Downing Street. He's like some illegal settler in the Sinai <laughs> Desert, lashing himself to a radiator. Or like David Brent haunting the office in that excruciating episode when he refuses to acknowledge that he has been sacked. Isn't there someone, the Queen's private secretary, the nice policeman on the door of number 10, whose job it is to tell him that the game is up? How ironic, hey? This is when journalists become... Prime Ministers, their words come back potentially to haunt them. Yeah. We just had Michael Fabricant on the programme. He's not going to be the person to have that conversation with Boris Johnson. I asked him directly what he'd say to Boris Johnson and he yeah. said he'd be loyal with him until he was, wasn't was Prime Minister. I have to say this morning, um, one Sky News reporter has said that one source has told them parts of Downing Street are preparing a resignation statement, but it's not clear uh, the Prime Minister would read it. Others insist... Boris Johnson is pressing on. And that does give you a bit of a picture of how unclear it is, how turbulent the situation is, as Boris Johnson uh, this morning already uh, is facing more resignations from his government. Uh, Laurie, we're talking about the economic sort of aftershocks of all of this. If there is a resignation from the Prime Minister, what does that do to markets? It, I think, again, markets have really priced this in. I actually think you'll see a rally. I think you'll see a bounce in sterling 
as and when he does go, simply because the uncertainty that Eamon mentioned, that is removed from the, from, the, from the scenario. Interesting to see who would come next, and I think there will be a little bit of, of choppiness while the, the story plays out, who will be the next prime minister, how long will Sahawi be in, in place. Uh, the markets want to see whether there is a plan. Is there a plan to stimulate the economy? The economy is meant to slow down quite a bit. That hits corporate profits. The markets want to see whether the, the new economic team have some way of raising consumer confidence.